So we agreed we have to change something, and I put some rules together here in no particular order and with no attempt to be fully inclusive. Uh, a little bit of Merlot helped me to put that together. I was asked on pretty short notice to come here. But I think I came up with something that we all can think about. For one thing, pharmaceutical manufacturing is still a science-based activity. It's applied chemistry, process technology, chemical engineering, applied biology if you go to bio biological products. And by the way, if you look in the pharmaceutical industry, most of the PhDs are sitting in R&D, not in manufacturing. Is that bad or good for manufacturing? I don't know, but it creates another gap. So, these are rules if you are in your company, for instance, as a process engineer and have a good idea and want to drive it forward. That's why, that's a point of view I try to make here. Uh, and yeah, manufacturing is science-based, but you still need to build a business case. We have beautiful science for our project there, or ideas, um, but the business case didn't quite make it to get the resources. I actually believe, have always believed, that quality and quality in the sense of you make a product that meets the customer's need, compliance in the sense of, okay, you've got to follow the rules that are out there, and you can't make them new, you know, you can't discuss with the cop whether the rule of speed limit, which bothers me in this country coming from Germany, um, is applicable to you or not. And effective manufacturing are actually compatible with each other. We have a lot of common interest. I don't particularly like the cheesy stuff from yearly meetings. We all have the same goal. Yeah, yeah, obviously, to some extent. But uh, we have a lot of overlapping interest that makes it more, more, more clear to a hardcore production guy. Um, if I tell him I have the same goals, he said, no, you want to hold me up and I want to release product. Um, but there's a lot of common interest there, like con constant, predictable production, no mistakes, I know what comes out. I don't have surprises in the end. I actually should be able to reduce end product test, testing, coming to that dream of, of releasing a product without having to test it because I know it's good. When you want to change, you also need to build coalitions on all levels of management. I mean, that's a pretty basic thing, but I think, still think I can put it out there. And especially if you have these language gaps, you've got to be careful that people understand what, you, what the hell you're talking about and what's in there for them. Um, and if you can't move in big steps, use small steps. Be persistent. We tried that. We wanted to go back to small steps, and it didn't work in this case. But some of the things we did actually made it to the fabric of the company. Things like uh, thinking scientifically. We call it statistical thinking at the time. Made it all the way to a criterion for succession planning and things like that. So you need to infect the entire company with a new thinking, and then you have a chance, no guarantee, that it's going to be moving forward. And that goes to the next point, institutionalize your change. These companies in the pharmaceutical industry are used to follow written procedures to the nth degree. And if you write something down, if you make a plan for change, it sounds like bureaucracy to some of your engineers you want to put in a new whatever. I saw Delta V was a rocket until recently. Um, and uh, in any case, you gotta, uh, if you write it down, make a plan, put it in the fabric of your procedure, things all of a sudden start moving. Sometimes things help. We, we just had, a, in a different context, not technology, a uh, uh, problem that we needed more resources, and we put it in some, some written plan, and all of a sudden even the, the, the CEO is a little bit embarrassed if he hasn't done anything on that point yet. It has an amazing magic. Also, there is, I said initially, and I didn't mean that in, a, in an arrogant way, that a lot of PhDs in R&D, but not in manufacturing. But these manufacturing guys have a lot of knowledge on their processes, especially in some of these biological processes. The industry I'm in now with this plasma has an amazing retention of people. Uh, that have been there for 20, 30 years. They are your best knowledge of process. They know what happens. They haven't put it in some software program, but they know what happens if you turn knob A and if you increase flow on pump B uh, just from experience. Institutionalizing, tapping into that is important in my opinion. And finally, I've talked about that because it just came up to me in the first half of this session. 
make sure there is this no language barrier. Or, well, there is a language barrier. Make sure you bridge it somehow between the automation IT people and the other folks. Um, don't speak, that's to you automation people who are here in the room, don't speak only among you, each other, okay? You're going to control something, but you still need to try to understand what this process actually does chemically or biochemically, what these cells in a reactor actually do, uh, what variables are in your input. Uh, you can control a process to the nth degree if you don't understand it. You control, you're not going to get a much different output than before and you're still going to have to do the end product testing. So, in summarizing, what are the key elements to move forward? There's a regulatory environment. Regulatory is, the environment is getting tougher again in the US. FDA is on the enforcement path. Uh, but I still think uh, you can convince them with good, good signs. Um, if you don't forget the regu regulatory environment, if you are aware of it. Obviously the economic environment, there must be, if you want to move on with new solutions, there must be something in for the company and you must think through it to make clear what is this immediate, uh, immediate reward that they get for it and how certain is it that they get it. And finally, additional progress in technology. Uh, my wish list would be still more selective sensors. Uh, and uh, for, for direct measurements that are validatable, that, that are explainable somehow, uh, and work in different environments. Software that doesn't increase the language barrier, but makes it easier from an interface point of view. That's a couple of things. So uh, with these thoughts, I'll turn it over to Ali. I think he has a lot of his thoughts of his own, and then we can have a fun discussion afterwards. Thanks for listening.